What you're seeing on my screen is not a video game. It looks like a video game, but it's actually entirely AI generated. But what's cool about this is every frame of this video is AI generated. It is a completely generated simulation. So you can see at the bottom left, you can see the up arrow moving the character forward through this environment. And as you look around, everything that comes up on your screen is generated on the fly, which is wild. So think about it this way, right? When you are playing an actual video game, all the assets you see, the world you are moving in and interacting with has already been pre-built and pre-created and it's uploaded. And that's why these games are so big. But this video is creating all every single thing on the fly. And this is a brand new AI model by Google called Genie 3 that allows you to create these simulations of any kind of world, real world simulations. Um, you know, you could be a space uh, astronaut going through an alien landscape, or you could be a tourist time traveling back in time to see how the pyramids were being built or anything. And the cool thing about this model is not just that it generates every frame as you see it or as it comes into your view, it also maintains consistency. So you notice how the castle walls are there. They were generated on the fly. When you look away and then look back, they're still there. So it kind of remembers what it generated previously and it stitches it all together. So in this video, you can see someone painting on a wall here. And now they move to the right hand side, paint again. And then they go back and you can see the old painting still there. Even though this is all being generated on the fly, every frame is still being generated on the fly. So all of that stuff in the environment wasn't there before when you're looking at the wall. And then as you turn, it's there. And then you turn back to the wall and the things that you've done to the wall are still in, uh, in the video, in the simulation. Now, all of these simulations can be created with just a text prompt. So you can type into the model and say, create an environment where I'm in front of a lake and there's mountains in the background. And I'm, you know, as I look around, there's trees, right? And so it creates this whole simulation. And then as you turn around, it sort of automatically generates all the, the, the frames um, or, or the scenery as you move. And it maintains the previous scenery. So you can go around and explore this beautiful landscape of an ocean or a lake, rather, and mountains around you. What's even cooler is you can add things to the simulation as you interact with it. You can say, I want someone on a jet ski or a dragon to come shooting in. And it does that, right? Because it's generating all this on the fly, it can generate new objects and new sequences and new things happening in the environment as you ask for it. So what's really great about this is this kind of technology can be used to create simulations where you can train virtual agents or AI agents or even train humans. Like if you want to train someone on how to bake something, uh, you could have like these simulations where, you know, if you don't have access to the real world stuff, you can go into the simulation and go around and like interact with objects and, um, and make, you know, or practice your skills. The other thing it can be used for is education. Um, for video games, obviously, you can create brand new images and scenery and, and worlds when you're in your video games on the fly. Um, and the fact that it maintains the consistency of the world means like if you do something in one area and you go away and you come back, that thing is still there. The other cool thing is it, it remembers it and evolves it over time as well. So um, if maybe you, you plucked a plant in one area and you went away and you came back, maybe you'll start to see it growing again, right? Like after some time. So uh, that's really interesting. And then finally, of course, like being able to, to simulate kind of novel experiences. So if you wanted to see what it was like living in ancient Greece or something like that, you'd be able to use this as a way to like navigate that world and, and see what it's like. So as I said, this is called Genie 3. It's a model by Google. Um, it is not yet publicly released, but they are going to be giving access to researchers over the next few weeks and months and perhaps even maybe do like a, uh, a broader public release in a, in a few months uh, once they have, uh, you know, like worked on the model a bit more. But, you know, if you're thinking, okay, this is great, this looks cool, but why not just, you know, video games work perfectly the way they are just now, you know, like you can 
you can you can create your own video game world and and go and interact with it. Uh, why do you need this kind of technology? And I think the great thing about this is the fact that you can add things to it on the fly and things like existing. Let's say you know you have like a virtual tour of a place or a video game. That's pre-packaged content. You can't add to it on the fly. But if you could, if you can add things to it on the fly, it becomes a much more richer experience. You can create more interactions with the simulation. A game, you can only pick up an object if the programmers program that into the game. But with this kind of stuff, you could, because it generates things on the fly, you can pick up or interact with any object as long as it, uh, you know, uh, fits within the, the, the model of, of that world. So go check out the, the, the blog on Google's website. It's Genie3. Uh, have a look at it. See some of the other videos and simulations that they have over there. Um, and just read the, the model capabilities and, and see for yourself. It is really amazing. And it's an exciting technology that um, I think can really change the way you know we we consume media and educate ourselves and play video games.